Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. This is Caribbean Newsline for Friday, August 11, 2017 from the CMC News Center in Bridgetown. I'm Don Paris. Good evening. The acting governor of the Central Bank in Barbados, Cleveston Haynes, reported on Friday that the economy grew by 2.2% in the first half of this year. But he says there is still a need to address the country's fiscal deficit and fluctuating international reserves. He told a meeting of the social partners that there is not enough fiscal space for maneuvering in the economy. The main drivers of the half-year economic growth remain tourism and construction. Unemployment is 9.5%. The inflation rate has risen to 3.2% compared to 1.3% for the same period last year. The central bank governor said there are several factors responsible for that. Obviously, the rebound in international oil prices, uh, our fuel imports have gone up about 44%, largely because of the, the rise in oil prices. We've also seen uh, in recent months uh, an increase in food prices, particularly of vegetables and fish. And this seems to be shortages in juice. In other words, when you have shortages in the production of vegetables and, 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 and you catch a fish, then the price goes in the other direction. And that has uh, gone up quite significantly and therefore has helped to pull the, the inflation rate up. And of course, there would have been the initial impact of the NSRL when it was introduced uh, at 2%. That would also have had some impact on the inflation rate, which we now see at about 3.2%. On the issue of the international reserves, Haynes said there was a slight improvement in the first quarter with the levels reaching $705 million. But in the second quarter, the reserves declined again to $635 million, which is the equivalent of 9.7 weeks of import cover. Haynes said that was a result of debt servicing during that quarter. Still above where we've had in the past, if you look at the early uh, the 80s and, and, and early 90s, we have uh, had reserve levels uh, either at the 9.7 9 or, or lower, but from a comfort perspective, we want to see our reserves at a much higher level. Uh, I think that is what gives confidence. One of the key uh, policy objectives for us is to maintain the exchange rate stability. Uh, that has been one of the bulwarks of the, the strength of this economy over the years. And therefore, as part of the effort to maintain that exchange rate stability, you need to uh, ensure that you have an adequate reserve cover uh, buffer at all times. And therefore, at 9.7 weeks, uh, even though that's manageable, it's still a situation which we need to address uh, as a priority uh, going forward. 
The central bank governor says the tax collection process must also be improved and the tax base should be widened to include the international business and services sector. Some of the policy options he says government has are taxation, expenditure reduction, divestment and debt reprofiling. Still in Barbados, Prime Minister Frondo Stewart is asking all the social partners to give the controversial National Social Responsibility Levy, the NSRL, a chance to work. He was wrapping up a day-long meeting with government, private sector and the trade union representatives, which was called to discuss the country's economic situation. The increase in the NSRL was the issue that prompted protests by thousands of workers last month and the unions are calling for a reduction in the tax, which jumped from 2 to 10 percent, or at least a coping mechanism. But Prime Minister Stewart says from the start, the partners were opposed to the tax and government's policies. We, business. we hope that the policy works. That is what every Minister of Finance and every government has to do. It is what every business manager has to do as well. It is what every manager in, in every context has to do. Put policy in place, put all the necessary pillars of support around that policy and work towards its success. But there's never a guarantee that what you want, you will get. So the National Social Responsibility Levy resulted from extensive discussion conceptualization, looking at pros and cons, uh, and trying our best to determine the best way forward. It was not done by stealth. It was done by discussion. And the policy was eventually brought before the cabinet of Barbados and a PowerPoint presentation done showing where it could lead and what were the the, the, the. and in his wrap-up comments president of the congress of trade unions and staff associations of barbados cedric murrell acknowledged that there were no concrete decisions coming out of friday's meeting but he acknowledged that it was an opportunity to start dialogue which he hopes will lead to fruitful outcome in the future you see how they're going to get it done uh, Prime Minister, I think that we, while we would not have charted a way forward totally, I think that the fact that we have been able to bring the issues as we see them to the table allows for the dialogue to continue. And therefore, I just rest on the point that the public of Barbados is expectant that that dialogue will bear fruit. But I end by where I spoke about what I spoke just before lunch. That dialogue and whatever the results of that dialogue must be grounded in reality and grounded in those things and those values which we still hopefully hold dear. In Bermuda, an eagerly awaited report into a clash between police and protesters outside the House of Assembly last December has concluded that officers did not engage in misconduct, misconduct during the incident. But the Police Complaints Authority report released on Thursday night said the confrontation did leave a scar on Bermuda's history. On December 2, 2016, police used pepper spray as they tried to disperse hundreds of protesters blocking Parliament. They had gathered to demonstrate against controversial airport redevelopment plans. According to the PCA, police used the pepper spray on the demonstrators only when they believed it was necessary. The six-person investigating team found no order was given from the higher-ups to use the spray and that the decision was taken by individual officers in keeping with the police use of force policy. The independent body concluded that the incident had soured the relationship between the public and the police. But the PCA report determined that 26 formal objections 
filed over the officers handling of demonstrators could not be upheld. There's speculation that St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalves may be contemplating a snap general election. This after he disclosed the results of a recent poll conducted by the Barbados-based Caribbean Development Research Services Cadres. Gonzalves hinted that the polls indicated he was way ahead of the other contenders. But when asked if having the poll meant an election was on the horizon, the Prime Minister said no. He told reporters the ULP had asked cadres to conduct the survey on several issues, including health, politics, employment, education, housing, water and electricity. But speculation of a snap election was fueled given that the poll came amidst repeated court rulings in favour of the main opposition New Democratic Party in their challenge to the results of the December 2015 general elections in two constituencies. The ruling Unity Labour Party narrowly won the elections with eight seats to the NDP's seven to get a fourth consecutive term in office. A high court is next month expected to hear an application by lawyers for the opposition to inspect the 2015 election documents, including the ballot boxes. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, a probe into American and Canadian diplomats mysteriously falling ill in Cuba. Stay with us, we'll have that story and more after the break. Carry Festa for you, Carry Festa for me, Carry Festa 13 Barbados. Carry Festa for you, Carry Festa for me, Carry Festa 13 Barbados. Over the years, since the 70s, we've come together in the Caribbean. Talented artists inspire creativity. Every territory has grown in culturally. Gary Festa for you, Gary Festa for me, Gary Festa 13 for everybody. Mutual heritage, regional unity. Gary Festa 13 Barbados. Join the Caribbean Broadcasting Union and its regional and international partners at the CBU Annual General Assembly, August 21st through 24th at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel in Nassau, the Bahamas, under the theme, Digital Developments in Caribbean Media. Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Dr. The Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis, will welcome delegates during the opening ceremony. Guyana's Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Kathy Hughes, will offer a keynote address on digital developments in the region. See the launch of the UNESCO-sponsored Manual of Social Media Guidelines for Caribbean Journalists with guest speaker, Jamaica's Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn. And hear from international media players about the new developments in digital television standards in Europe, the US, and Japan. And this year's Caribbean Broadcasting Awards Gala at the Atlantis Resort Paradise Island is not to be missed. Call 246-430-1007 to book your space in the three-day conference and exhibition. Don't miss the CBU 48th Assembly at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel in Nassau from August 21st through 24th. Discounts on flights to the Assembly on the official airline, Caribbean Airlines. Welcome back. United States and Canadian officials are conducting investigations into incidents of diplomats posted in Havana falling ill amid reports they may have been targeted by a sonic weapon. U.S. officials refused to directly blame Cuba for the incidents, which appear to have started last year. And Havana insisted it's working to protect the U.S. mission. A U.S. State Department spokeswoman would not disclose details about, or the, about the nature or number of the injuries, but confirmed that some American diplomats had returned home for treatment. Unnamed officials also told the United States media that the staff may have been harmed by a sonic device fired either inside or outside their Havana residences. A sonic weapon is a device that uses high-frequency sound to cause injury, incapacitation or death. 
Over in Jamaica, a two-day strike by haulage contract contractors and operators at the Kingston Freeport has left some exporter exporters with bills in the millions. Reports say that last Friday, truckers had to wait more than six hours to retrieve containers from the facility instead of the usual 45-minute wait. The truckers said much of that was due to insufficient and outdated equipment at the port. And after numerous meetings with the operators of the terminal, the protesters said they were just fed up and decided to withdraw their services on Tuesday. The truckers returned to their jobs on Thursday. But manufacturers are counting their losses that they've incurred as a result of the delay. Andrea Chisholm of TVJ News has the details. Imagine having a company that makes beverages and not being able to get the ingredients to make a drink. And imagine not being able to ship those beverages abroad because of the congestion at the ports. Well, no more need for imagination. It's the reality of the Jamaica Exporters Association, which has over 200 members and ships over 100 containers per day. We have one member that had six containers that weren't able to leave on Friday, and, and that has a major economic impact. And these containers, uh, some of them were going to the, to the UK, uh, and I, as I mentioned before, I mean, now this shipment is delayed one whole week. It won't be able to leave here until the 18th of August, you know, and I mean, there's each day... There, there's a cost to that delay of that shipment. The cost factor is important. For example, if there's no product to sell, there's no money to make. And if an exporter does not deliver the goods on time based on contractual obligations, they may face penalties, not to mention reputational damage. The figure for the economic fallout is still being tabulated, but the JEA spoke about the cost to keep containers at the port for extended periods. For example, some of the demurrage fees, right, to sit there on the port, you're talking about uh, $2,000 US a day. That's a lot of money. Times 10 days, that's a lot of money. In Jamaican dollars, that's about 256000 per day, 2.56 million for 10 days. The exporters are, however, having discussions with the authorities who they hope may absorb some of those costs. It cuts into our competitiveness um, as our advantage as well, you know, because if our goods are delayed, then that leaves an opening for other goods to enter those markets. In the meantime, the opposition PNP is calling for the government to intervene and solve the problems at the ports. The PNP said the long-term impact on the economy can be debilitating as delayed goods and transportation time wasted at the ports affect earnings, threaten jobs and production. And ahead in Newsline Sports, the Caribbean adds to its IAAF World Championship Medal Hall. Are you missing out? Hmm. It's the summer of 60. Up to 60% off accommodations, travel, tours, and special deals. Plus, the music, the party, the vibes, the celebration of the 60th carnival. It's the summer of 60. Yeah! Love Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua and Barbuda. The beach is just the beginning. Take advantage of these special deals. Go to visit AntiguaBarbuda.com for more info. Do you want a real Barbadian experience with peace and tranquility? A home away from home feeling? Come and stay at Best E Villas. We offer two amazing locations to choose from, Prospect St. James or Christ Church. Plan a staycation for your anniversary, birthdays, summer or winter breaks, or any special event. Best E Villas is located in close proximity to our lovely beaches. Call us now at 246-425-9751 or visit us at bestevillas.com and make your booking for the best in villas.
Continuing with sports now, the Caribbean added two more bronze medals to its IAAF World Championships Hall on Thursday, including one from the lone regional runner in the men's 200-meter finals. Trinidadian sprinter Jareem Richards delivered on the promise shown earlier in the qualifying rounds when he clinched bronze in that event. He clocked 20.11 seconds as he followed home winner Ramil Guliev of Turkey, who was timed at 20.09 seconds, and a silver medalist Wade Van Niekerk, who crossed the line in 20.11 seconds. The race for the medals went down to the finish as Richards, who was off the curve in fifth, fought back but was just outdipped on the line by Van Niekerk as both recorded the same time. Richards said afterwards he had botched his start, so it was a great achievement to recover and secure a podium finish. Um, the race, it was a good race, I would say. Um, stumbled out of the blocks a little bit, but I still recovered and still was able to get a medal. So, uh, you know, I'm just thankful for that. And God alone knows I've been working hard all year and receiving his blessings. My intentions was to win. It was a really close race. Uh, I wish I had a win, but I mean, I got a medal, so I'm not even mad. And I'm just thankful for being a medalist and being able to go on the podium. Meanwhile, Jamaica's Ristanana Tracy handed the Caribbean its other medal when she also clinched bronze in the women's 400-meter hurdles. She produced a personal best 53.74 seconds to finish behind Americans Corey Carter, who got silver with a 53.07 second run, and Delilah Mohammed, who was third in 53.50 seconds. Great. This is my fourth world championship. This is my first world championship finals. And to come out with a medal, I feel extremely proud of myself. So this means that Rista is back, and, and I am confident and, I'm, and I believe in my coach and I believe in, 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 in the program. So I'm just looking forward from here. And two Bahamians, Shawnee miller Weibo and Tinia Gather, will contest Friday's final of the women's 200 meters. miller Weibo, who finished a disappointing fourth in the 400 meter final on Wednesday night, recorded the joint leading time of 22.49 seconds, while Gather was timed at 22.85 seconds. Jamaicans so Charlie Forbes, Simone Facey, and Jodian Williams all missed out on the final, along with Bahamian Anthonique Strachan and Trinidadian Simoy Hackett. Meanwhile, Trinidadian Kishon Walker, the 2012 Olympic gold medalist, advanced to the men's javelin final after throwing 86.01 meters. And all eyes will be on the track on Saturday as well when Usain Bolt runs his last race, the 4 by 100 meter relay. Jamaican sprinter Johan Blake is warning that his country's sprint dominance on the world stage is in jeopardy. He issued the caution on the heels of his own elimination in the semi-finals of the 200 meters and his fourth place in the 100 meters at the IAAF World Championships earlier this week, as well as Usain Bolt's third place finish in that same sprint over the weekend. Blake says with Bolt retiring, there is a lot of pressure on the remaining athletes. You know, the big man is leaving and there's a lot riding on our shoulders and so far I'm, I'm still the, the man in Jamaica, the fastest ever in, um, in Jamaica this year. So I just want to just keep focused and just keep getting my times better and keep, if I run more races, I think I'll be much better. But you believe we have a problem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you guys want to really step up. Do you think that you two need to step up as well? Yeah, of course. Uh, I never caught up myself because I can do much better than what I'm doing, but... And as several of Trinidad and Tobago's athletes consider whether they should continue to represent the Twin Island Republic, the country's last world champion, Jehu Gordon, says they need more assistance and more respect. Gordon won gold in the men's 400-meter hurdles in 2013, becoming TNT's second world champion, following on Atto Bolden, who earned gold in the 200 meters in Athens in 1997. Gordon says for an athlete to do well, they must be able to focus on the sport. As an athlete, the less that you have to worry about is the more comfortable it will be and the better I think your performance would be. So in instances before I know that the year that I was able to receive all my funding on time, that was the year that I won the World Championships, not saying that that was the only factor, but you know, from the time I could probably pick up on an injury as fast as possible and do the necessary treatment or don't have to worry about paying my rent when the rent is due when the month comes. You know, being able to get the right number of races or international competitions under my belt definitely
the ogres well into He says, they are aware that times are hard and cuts have been made in all sectors, including funding for sports. I think it has been more of a concern now compared to before, before you would get something. I think, you know, given the state that the country is in right now, I know the ministry had to make some budget cuts. I also know that, you know, the entries, they called us up to Miami this year and they, they made it aware that there's a lack of funding for the athletes. So a lot of athletes are dependent on the government funding, one, because they don't have contractual agreements with a sponsor, title sponsor, and then the lack of support itself from Trinidad and Tobago. It, Gordon says if the athletes are making do with whatever little they have. He adds, despite track and field being our most successful sport, producing two Olympic gold medalists, two world champions, among other achievements, the sport still lacks the respect it deserves. I, I just don't think that track is given the respect that is due. Um, you see football, you see cricket, you know, they're always out there in the limelight and a lot of support is given to those sports. You know, Trinidad, the culture that we face with is a more party-centered kind of, kind of culture. If it's not for the Olympic Games, most people are not going to really pay particular attention to track and field per se. But at the end of the day, track and field continues to bring in the most medals, you know, on an international basis. To cricket now, Barbados Tridents defeated host St. Lucia Stars by 21 runs under the Duckworth-Lewis method in the eighth match of the Caribbean Premier League at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground on Thursday night. It was a day when captains stood tall and showed an example to other members of their teams. Trident's skipper Kiron Pollard top scored with 83 not out, while Kane Williamson contributed 46 and Dwayne Smith scored 36. Kyle Mears was the pick of the bowlers with two for 30. Set a target of 197 to win after Tridents reached 196 for four in their 20 overs. Stars had only reached 129 for six when Rain stopped play for the third time in the day. After 15.2 overs, they were 21 runs behind the par score and lost the game. But captain Darren Sammy fought valiantly, ending on 60 not out. The CPL continues tonight at 9 o'clock when Trinbago Knight Riders face Guyana Amazon Warriors at Queen's Park Oval in a port of Spain. Meantime, the CPL is in talks with the Pakistan Super League to create an annual series of matches between the winners of the two leagues. It's envisaged that the series, which could be launched next year, would feature three matches between the champions of the two leagues and would take place just before the 2018 CPL season. Chief Operating Officer of the CPL, Pete Russell, said it would make the most sense to have a three-game series over four days, adding that the United States would be, uh, be the ideal place to host it, given the large number of cricket fans from both Pakistan and the Caribbean who live there. The potential size of the TV audience for such matches means that the broadcasting rights could be of significant value and help to make the CPL self-sustainable. The CPL has lost money in each of its four full seasons and expects to do so again this year. And that's sports. We'll be right back. Carry Festa for you. Carry Festa for me. Carry Festa 13 Barbados. together in the Caribbean. Talented artists inspire creativity. Every territory has exploded culturally. Gary Festa for you. Gary Festa for me. Gary Festa 13 for everybody. Mutual heritage. Regional unity. Gary Festa 13 Barbados. Are you missing out? Hmm. It's the summer of 60. Up to 60% off accommodations, travel, tours, and special deals. Plus, the music, the party, the vibes, the celebration of the 60th carnival. It's the summer of 60. Yeah! Love Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua and Barbuda. The beach is just the beginning. 
Take advantage of these special deals. Go to visit AntiguaBarbuda.com for more info. Tell me where to do with it. And that's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sports around the clock, log on to KanoNews.com. We'll be back here again on a Monday. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night and a blessed weekend. <laughs>